All right, I'm scared. We're about to see what happens when we overload our tractor. How do you work a tractor beyond its limitations? Well, I'm gonna show you today exactly what happens when you try to lift too much with a front end loader or lift too much with a three point hitch. So this comment came up uh, several times in the busted Bobcat video that I did a little while back. Had a customer who put a lot of hours on his tractor in a relatively short amount of time compared to the majority of tractor owners, okay? So he put about 500 hours on in a year compared to most maybe putting 50 to 100 hours on in a year, okay? So we did work his tractor a lot. He had a lot of problems with that tractor though. And 500 hours for a tractor isn't much at all, whether it's in a year or in 20 years. It's just not a lot of hours on a tractor. So some folks chimed in with comments like, you know, he was working the tractor too hard or he bought the wrong machine. You know, tractors can't do that kind of work and he's working it beyond his limitations. They're just, you know, it's just asking too much of it. And I just really struggle with those kinds of concepts and thought processes because tractors are designed to do work and they're designed to do work within certain parameters and they can't do anything beyond that. That's just, that's not possible to do. So it's like saying, well, you scoop too many piles of dirt with your bucket or only dig 80 scoops with your backhoe before you need to take a break for two hours because your tractor has to rest. I mean, these are kind of goofy concepts that I don't think make a lot of sense. And so I want to demonstrate again what happens if you do try to work your tractor beyond what it's rated to do. I think that'll help visualize how you can't do that, all right? There's safety factors in place. And in fact, uh, we did this last summer with a John Deere 3025E trying to pull too big of a, a, a all-purpose plow behind it. And what happens is the tractor just stalls out. Tractors have mechanisms in place to, to prevent the operator from unknowingly damaging the tractor or perhaps putting themselves in a dangerous situation. Not that you can't find yourself in some bad spots, but it's gonna have things in place there to help that. And so everything on a tractor is built, engineered, designed, assembled to all work together, all right? And, and you see some folks out there that are making hydraulic tweaks, and you gotta do that with caution. You gotta really know what you're doing because if you're gonna try to up the hydraulic capacity of the tractor, then you need to know if the loader can handle it, if the axle can handle it, if the tires can handle it, if you have enough ballast weight to handle it. You know, there's so many other factors that go into what a tractor can do. And if you make a tweak to try to get more oomph out of it, it could have some really bad unintended consequences. All right, so we're gonna do this demonstration now. We're gonna start out with the front end loader. I do have liquid ballast inside the tires. This is the heaviest tractor on the market in its frame size. So we have a lot of ballast weight here. We're gonna try to lift way more than what this loader is rated to do just to see what happens. Can you believe that? We just tried on purpose to overload our tractor, work it beyond its limitations, and absolutely nothing happened. Can you believe that? I am so disappointed. Huh. What are these tractor manufacturers doing, designing things to protect the operator and the machine? What's this world coming to? Well, let's see what happens on the three-point hitch. Folks, you're looking at our Versa forks right here. These are gonna be able to mount on the three-point hitch or quick hitch like what you see here, but also on the front end loader of your tractor. We're gonna have them for JDQA and for SSQA. Who knows, maybe Yanmar. We are coming out with a Yanmar stump bucket. Just had the first couple come in. Go to our website, sign up for the notification. If you're watching this video in the future, hopefully we have the forks out by then, but the best way is to go to our website, find the Versa forks, get your name on the list or buy them if they're available. So besides just mounting on the front end loader and the three point hitch, which is pretty sweet, they're gonna have a built in two inch receiver. You're gonna have chain hooks hiding back here too, a built in weight rack, and also a hole up here in case you wanna add a ball for maybe a gooseneck receiver as well. All right, so we added a whole bunch of weight. Uh, the bottom crate was 1400 pounds plus the weight of the crate. So another, I don't know, maybe 40 pounds. 
The top crate uh, was 948, probably plus another 40, just call it basically 1,000 plus 1,400, just call it 2,400 pounds. This, I think, is way beyond what this three-point can lift. So I'm just adjusting the forks here. We'll see what happens. I'm almost tempted to put that weight on the front just as counterweight so we don't tip this thing back that way. What do you think? Well, if we lift it off the ground, it's not gonna be much. So. Dramatic music. Folks, you are about to see what happens when you lift up way more than what the tractor's designed to on the three-point hitch. Here we go. And there you have it folks. That is what happens when you work a tractor beyond its limitations. Absolutely nothing. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of rim guard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at rimguardsolutions.com. Alrighty folks, so what did we learn today? We learned a tractor can do what it can do. It can't go beyond that, all right? So if you're thinking, hmm, am I lifting too much? You're not, because the tractor is designed to lift that amount if it's within the capability to do so. That doesn't mean you can't use common sense, right? Safety measures, roll bar up, proper ballast weight, don't go sideways on a hill. There's all sorts of knucklehead moves as an operator that you can do to put yourself in a bad situation and not overwork the tractor, but maybe hurt yourself and hurt the machine in some other way. Now we've done all sorts of safety videos and I'd encourage you to check out that playlist, especially if you're a new operator. You don't wanna find out when you're in the middle of that situation, it's too late then, so find out how to avoid those dangerous situations up front. But getting back to stalling out the tractor when we were pulling that disc, you know, and you can say that that would be using it beyond its limitations, but you're not gonna do that on a repetitive basis. There's no point, it's inefficient, you're not accomplishing anything, you're getting really frustrated doing it, so it's like a one and done type of thing. And we do that on this channel to experiment and see how far we can take things, just to see what the answer is. Oh, one other kind of related topic too is the tractor range that you're in, or the tractor speed that you're in. And a lot of folks wanna be in the high range to go as fast as they can, but if you do that, you're gonna lose all the torque that you get in the low range to accomplish that same work. And high range is typically just kind of from going from point A to point B with no load on the tractor. Even hills can stall out a tractor if you're in high range. If you need to be doing, you know, hauling a load or if you're gonna be working a field or brush hogging, be in low or medium range if your tractor has it equipped. Always reference your manual, it'll tell you. But again, these are the kind of things where you're not gonna do them on a repetitive basis because the tractor's gonna tell you, I don't like it. And then that means you're not gonna like it either because you're not gonna get your work done the way that you want to. So I'm a visual learner and hopefully this kind of helps you visualize what will happen if you think you're overloading your tractor, right? I lifted a safe up or I tried to lift a safe up uh, when we were moving it a few years back with a John Deere 3032E, wouldn't lift it off the ground, right? It wasn't putting itself in a dangerous situation because it couldn't. So if you enjoyed today's video, we'd love to have you stick around. We have over 600 other videos out there too, so make sure you hit subscribe and follow along. And if you're looking for something for your tractor, an attachment for the front end loader or the three point hitch, well we sell and ship all over the country every day of the week. We include free shipping, rewards, and financing too. Check us out at goodworkstractors.com. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Just for fun, we thought we'd see if the Kubota can lift up this uh, load here. Again, about 2,400 pounds. The number on the loader 
1154. LA1154, that 1154 actually stands for kilograms. That's how Kubota does all their loaders. All right, so if you convert that to pounds, I don't know, you have 24, 2,500 pounds. Now we all know those ratings are very generic. You know, they're kind of in a perfect world situation. We do have loaded tires on here. We got some more weight on the back. We got the cab, we got a lot of ballast weight. We're gonna see if we can pick this load up here i honestly don't know if it will or not it should be right around the max give or take oh and make sure you check out that grill guard on front too 511 designs save five percent with code gwt grill guards for kubota john deere and more too